been reading Canoe Paddles by Graham Warren and David Gildmark. And because I have a sufficient amount of ash lumber, I'm going to be uh, attempting to make a paddle out of uh, <clears throat> an ash blank, which is, uh, this wood is an inch and a quarter. I've already plotted out my beaver tail and otter tail versions of the canoe paddles that I'd like to make. These were offsets provided by this book, Canoe Paddles. This is the best piece of lumber that I could come up with that where I'm gonna attempt this. And you can see that I have some cupping here. It's gonna require uh, some planning. I think I can get away with an eighth of an inch. And uh, to remove the cupping, and then uh, have a suitable piece of material here for uh, starting this process. So the board has been planed and without removing too much material, I'm just right at an inch and a quarter. And the cupping has been removed. I really like the grain. The end grain is uh, going to work. I'm nine and a half inches, both top and bottom of this board now. So now I'm able to establish my center line for laying out the pattern of this beaver tail paddle that I'll be building. So I've cut out the pattern from the offset. I'm going to transfer it onto this piece of wood here, cut that out, clean it up, and then use that pattern for forever. You know, I'll, I'll hang it up. This is a beaver tail paddle that I'm making right now. I also created offsets onto paper pattern for an otter tail paddle, but I'm not building that now. So I'm only focusing on the beaver tail. Once I get this cut out, I'll transfer that pattern and Symmetrically, I only, you, you do a half and then you flip it over so you have the full shape of the paddle. I'll transfer that onto the ash lumber, cut that out. Cut out the full blank after I get done marking that out and then, you know, let it rest for, for some time. It, it's recommended to wait two weeks in case there's any relaxation of the grain, which I've had that happen in the past, especially with with gunnels and things like that. There's warping that may occur when, when that stress and the pressure of the wood is relaxed from the cut. So we'll have to see how that goes. This blank may not work, it may work. So I've marked the center line on my pattern. I also have a center line on the ash lumber blank. I've lined up the edges on both the blank and the pattern. For now, I'm just gonna get the pattern transcribed onto the blank, I'm tracing out the pattern. This is the handle pattern that has also been provided by the book. Starting to look a little bit like a canoe paddle. I, I made two templates off two sets of offsets one to make an otter tail paddle and one to make a beaver tail i've cut the beaver tail but look at this i figure that i might have enough material here to make an otter tail but that's kind of interesting how the same blank material yields possibly enough material to make another paddle it was a 10 inch wide board by 60 inches long so I'm going to ask some questions about that and maybe I can salvage this wood. Definitely can repurpose it in other, other areas, but uh, if I can use it for another paddle, I'd like to do that because it's already been planed um, to the proper thickness. So we'll see.
thickness of this blank is one inch and an eighth, one and an eighth inches. So the center line for this blank is going to be nine sixteenths. I want to do is identify the blade thickness, which is going to be three eighths for this particular type of blade, this paddle. Once I have that made, then those will be the lines that I work down to. And then I'll start adding my templates for the throat of the paddle and then the grip of the paddle. It's recommended that you actually do the grip, the blade, and then work the uh, canoe paddle shaft uh, in that order, in that sequence. And it makes sense because it gives you a clamping surface for the shaft and uh, you work from there. So I'm just going to go ahead and mark out this blade thickness and then start adding the templates and drawing those, taping and drawing those in. Okay, so now that I've made my blade thickness lines, reference lines, I also now need to mark my blade edge thickness lines, which will fall within the, the center of the blade thickness lines. Just using a simple uh, combination square to mark my edge thickness lines. It's a little rough in terms of a uh, form of measurement, but uh, I've taken careful consideration in the step and I feel I can be quite accurate with this. So taking a close look at the lines that I've marked, these two outside lines here are the total blade thickness. So it's gonna taper down to the edges and these are the 3 32nd blade edge lines here. Total thickness, so at the center line of the spline, it's gonna taper down to the blade edge. So all of this material will be removed. So I'm now in the process of uh, shaving down the bevels. I've already started on, on this edge and I'm just using a plane and a spoke shave to take this down to the blade thickness line. The next step is to shape the shaft and this will be the last step. Just going to scribe a line. So I've measured in four different locations and I'm inching an eighth. Use my contract a square and then carefully line up the diagonals. Three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to mark three quarters of an inch from this side and then I'll measure three quarters of an inch from the opposite side and I'm going to repeat these measurements down the length of the shaft and then uh, repeat that on all four sides. Okay, so the eight sided carvings are complete and that's the step required to start rounding the shaft. And ultimately what it creates is an octagon of the paddle shaft itself. And then I'll go into a final detailing of this paddle but this paddle is just about done here now and then I'll move on to the otter tail paddle well the next stop is the otter tail style paddle I'm gonna get into carving
both paddles are complete. The auto tail just finished up on, just finished sanding. I just wet it down about an hour ago and raised the grain and then finished sanding with 220 grit. And it feels really nice. Again, both paddles made out of the same blank. So uh, efficiency of wood use there. I will be using boiled linseed oil. It's been recommended to me to warm the oil and uh, to encourage uh, absorption with this wood. So I'm gonna try that. Just gonna pour it into this metal coffee can, take it up to the kitchen, and then uh, just uh, heat it within some uh, a water vat or something like that and do a double boiler type of thing just to warm up the oil. And then I'll bring it back down to the shop, apply the finish and let that dry. Well, hopefully you enjoyed the video. And uh, next thing is just uh, finishing the blades and then letting that dry. Thank you.